Now we we read in the papers every day, and and they get us all excited over to one or a dozen different problems that's supposed to be before this country. There's not, but there's not really, but one problem before the whole country at this time. It's not the balancing of Mr. Mellon's budget. That that's his worry. That ain't ours, and it's not the uh, League of Nations that we read so much about, or it's not, uh, it's not the silver question. The only problem that confronts this country today is that at least seven million people are out of work. That's our only problem. There is no, there, there is no other one before us at all. They, it's to see that every man that uh, uh, wants to, able to work, is allowed to find a place to, to go to work and also to arrange some way of getting a more equal distribution of the, of the wealth in country. Now, uh, it's uh, prohibition. We hear a lot about that. Well, that, that, that's nothing to compare to your neighbor's children that, that are hungry. It's, it's, it's food. It ain't drink that we're worried about today. Here a few years ago, we were so afraid that the poor people were liable to take a drink that now we've fixed so they can't even get something to eat. So uh, here we are in a country with, with more wheat and more corn and more money in the bank and more cotton, more everything in the world. There's not a product that you can name that we haven't gotten more of it than any country ever had in, in the face of the earth. And yet we've got people starving. They... We'll hold the distinction of being the only nation in the history of the world that ever went to the poorhouse in an automobile. The potter's field are lined with granaries full of grain. Now, if there ain't something cockeyed in, in an arrangement like that, then this microphone here in front of me is, well, it's, it's a cuspidor, that's all. Now, uh, I, I think that perhaps they'll, they'll arrange it. I think some our big men will perhaps fix some way of fixing a different distribution of things. If they don't, they're certainly not big men and won't be with us long. That's one thing. These people that you're asked to to aid, why, they're, they're not asking for, for charity. They're asking, naturally asking for a job. But if you can't give them a job, why, the next best thing you can do is, is see that they have food and the necessities of life. You know, there's not a one of us that has anything that uh, these people that are without it now haven't contributed to what we've got. I don't suppose there's uh, the, the most unemployed or the hungriest man in America has contributed, contributed in some way to the wealth of every millionaire in America. It wasn't the working class that brought this condition on at all. It was the it was the big boys themselves who thought that this financial drunk we were going through was going to last forever. They over merged and over capitalized and over everything else. So that's the fix that we're in now. Now I uh, I think that every town and every city will will raise this this money. In fact, they can't afford not to. Uh, they've got the money because there's as much money in the country as there ever was. The, uh, only the fewer people have it, but it's there. 